Welcome to Storytime. My name is Berea and today we are going to be reading Who's Your Daddy? Discovering the Awesomest Daddy Ever. And this book is by Lisa and Missy Harper. It is illustrated by Olivia Duchess. Hi, my name is Missy, but sometimes my mom calls me Toots Pumpkin, Peanut, or Squirty McTurdy. I'm adopted, I like to swim, and I love string cheese. For as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Mommy and Cookie the Wonder Dog living at our house. I always thought our family was perfect, but then one day at school, George asked me a question. Who's your daddy? I thought about that for a minute and said, I don't have one. But George made a scrunchy face and tilted his head to one side like he was confused. But I thought everybody has a daddy, he said, who plays soccer with you and drives you to school and makes you pancakes in the morning. Then the teacher just told us, told us to stop talking, so I just put my head down and started coloring. That afternoon, when Mommy picked me up from school, I told her about George's question. She put her chin in her hand, which is what she does when she's thinking really hard, and then she drove us to the park near my school. When we reached the pond, she turned around and said, come here, baby, and she let me sit in her lap. After she played with my hair for a few minutes, which makes me feel safe and happy and sleepy all at the same time, she said, honey, you actually do have a daddy, and his name is Daddy God. He knew you, were, he knew you before you were born and he loves you more than all the stars in the sky. I thought about that on the way to the grocery store. Then I asked mommy, if God is my daddy, how come he doesn't drive me to school or teach me to play soccer or make pancakes with me like George's daddy? She responded, well, sweetie, daddy God is invisible. So we can't see him the way that we can see human daddies with skin on. And even though Daddy God doesn't drive a car or coach soccer or make pancakes, he did create the whole wide world. And he is always with you and he will never, ever leave you and never, ever stop loving you. When we got to the grocery store, I had lots of questions. Is God everyone's daddy? I asked while putting mangoes, my favorite fruit ever, into our car. Yes, she said, but some people don't know he's their heavenly father yet. So kids who have skin daddies get daddy God too, I asked. Yes, they do, said mommy with a smile. But if they already have a skin daddy, why do they need God to be their daddy? I wondered out loud while skipping down the aisle. Even though skin daddies are wonderful toots, they can't be perfect like daddy God. Remember how I was impatient with you the other night and I apologize for raising my voice? Well, skin mommies and daddies make mistakes sometimes. Plus, see that skin daddy over there? He's a soldier, and sometimes soldiers have to go far, far away to work and don't get to come home for a long time. I thought and thought about skin daddies and daddy God all the way home. It was definitely going to take a while to figure out this whole dad thing. By the time that we got home, I had another question. Mommy... Do skin daddies who go away always come back? I could tell it was what mommy called a whopper of a question because she tilted her head to one side just like George did when I told him I didn't have a daddy. Then she stopped putting away the groceries and she said, come here, pumpkin, and she led me up to the front porch. We swung back and forth for a few minutes and watched a rabbit scamper across the yard before mommy replied softly, sweetheart, some skin daddies don't come back home to their kids, and some skin mommies don't, don't get to either. She reminded me of how my first mommy, Mommy Marie, had loved me with her whole heart, but she got super sick in Haiti, and she had to leave me when she went to heaven. We talked about how Mama Marie's death makes me sad, and then we talked about another, another really sad thing called divorce. Mommy told me that divorce is when husbands and wives grow hurt sticks in their hearts and they stop living together because they keep poking each other. When I said that it was definitely going to take a while to figure out why 
death and divorce makes us so sad, she chuckled and said, oh baby, you don't have to figure it all out now. When you're sad, just scoot as close as you can to Daddy God and tell him everything that's on your heart. Then she wrapped her skin arms around me and said to imagine Daddy God's great big arms around both of us. And pretty soon, I didn't feel sad at all anymore. We kept swinging until the sun turned pinkish purple, my most favorite color, and then it slid behind the hill. Then Mommy whispered, at school tomorrow? You might want to tell Curious George that he actually has two daddies, one with skin and one who is invisible yet perfect. Which is exactly what I did the next day. Actually, I told my whole class about Daddy God, the awesomest daddy ever. Because when you figure out something this good, you can't just keep it to yourself. Remember, father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families.